Hello and welcome to History Porium. Our star today is Alice Arden, a Tudor woman whose disdain for her husband resulted in a salacious tale of adultery and murder. Alice Arden and Thomas were a typical middle-class Tudor couple. They had a delightful home together at Faversham Abbey and they had at least one child. Yet just beneath the facade of marital bliss was a deeply unhappy couple. Over time, Alice and Thomas were growing more distant from one another. One day, Alice noticed a super handsome local tailor, Richard Mosby, and the pair hit it off. Mosby and Alice began to meet frequently, often at Alice's home. Within no time, they were in the midst of a full-blown affair. Alice was anything but discreet. Their affair was plainly obvious to everyone, including her husband Thomas. Thomas was a quiet man and generally wanted to avoid drama. He was friendly with Alice's family and didn't want to sever ties with them. So he decided to turn a blind eye to Alice's extramarital activities. As time went by, Alice began to hold Thomas responsible for her unhappiness. She hated her husband and within no time started pondering methods for doing away with him. She didn't have a clue how to get away with murder. She needed help. Alice went through a list of people in their town who had beef with her husband. She soon found an ally in John Green, a tailor who had previously been engaged in a series of disputes with Thomas. John hated Thomas and was more than happy to help Alice out. John was a well-connected man. Through some shady contacts, he stumbled upon a mercenary known as Black Will. Black Will was a veteran soldier and was responsible for a series of robberies and murders in France. Blackwell's resume was perfect for the job. He was hired. Despite having a professional involved, there were several failed attempts on Thomas's life before the dastardly trio were successful. On one occasion, they followed Thomas and attempted to set up a series of ambushes. Thomas, perhaps sensing his impending doom, made sure he was never alone. Killing Thomas was turning into a series of failures. They needed a new approach. A final idea was hatched. Valentine's Day was approaching. Mosby could pick a fight with Thomas in public and then kill him in a duel. Thomas, however, was known for being a lover and not a fighter. There was no way Thomas would accept a challenge, especially over a woman as cold as Alice. Alice was getting impatient. Thomas needed to die, and he needed to die soon. Why leave a bunch of incompetent men to do a woman's job, Alice thought. So she took matters into her own hands and hatched a plan to do away with Thomas once and for all. One Sunday, Alice hid Black Will in a cupboard in the parlor and served Thomas a delightful last supper. Afterwards, Thomas and Mosby sat down to play a game. Alice made sure that all the servants were busy elsewhere so there were no witnesses. The coast was clear, the scene was set, Alice gave the signal they were waiting for. Black Will emerged from the cupboard and approached Thomas from behind. He placed a cloth over Thomas's head and the murderous gang restrained him. Black Will placed his hands around Thomas's throat and began strangling him. Mosby stepped in. Thomas had kept away his delightful Alice for too long, so he smacked Thomas around the head with an iron and then took out a knife and slit his throat. Poor old Thomas didn't see it coming. He thrashed around to try and escape their grip, but he couldn't free himself. Having botched the murder so many times, Alice didn't trust the men would finish the job. Alice took the knife from Mosby and, without hesitation, brutally stabbed Thomas eight times. Alice's final blows did the trick. Thomas's life drained from his body and he took his final breath. Black Will dragged Thomas's body into the cupboard to hide it from immediate view. Alice may have been a murderer, but she still appreciated good service when she saw it. She gave Black Will eight pounds for his troubles and a promise of a five-star review for any future customers. The murderous gang were ecstatic. They danced, drank, celebrated through the night to try and trick the neighbors into thinking Thomas was alive and entertaining guests. They dressed Thomas's body in night clothes and carried his body into a field near the house to make it look like he was murdered outside at night. At the back of the house, Alice put on a show worthy of an Oscar she cried and wailed over his absence late into the evening so that the servants in the house would believe she was genuinely concerned about him. The next morning, Alice put on her best crocodile tears and alerted the townspeople of Thomas's absence. They immediately commenced a search and within no time discovered his frozen corpse still in the field outside. Something didn't add up. It was a freezing cold night with the snow on the ground 
and Thomas was only wearing his nightgown and slippers, they searched the scene for more clues. There had been snow that night, and the snow had preserved a series of footsteps walking away from the corpse. The townsfolk traced the footsteps back from the body. To their horror, the footsteps led straight into the Arden residence. Alice had some serious questions to answer. The mayor immediately confronted Alice. She denied any knowledge of the murder and acted shocked at the evidence put before her. The mayor didn't buy it. The mayor arranged for the Arden residents to be searched. It seems that Alice and her accomplices were so wasted that they didn't even notice Thomas's blood was sprayed across the parlor in the Arden house. Following the trail of blood through the home, the townsfolk stumbled upon the poorly hidden and bloodied murder weapons. Alice was in deep trouble. With this evidence in hand, the mayor continued his interrogation. Eventually, Alice realized that she couldn't deny it anymore. She confessed. She told them about the murder plot and spilled all the gruesome details, including the names of her accomplices. Shortly after the confession, Alice was tried and found guilty of petty treason. She was sentenced to be burned at the stake. After Alice's conviction, she was taken to Canterbury, where she was presented to a baying crowd of hundreds. She was led to the prior and bound to it with rope. The prior was lit and the frames gradually crept up her body. As the crowd cheered, the smell of charred flesh filled the air. She screamed in agonizing pain. Eventually, the fire rose up to her chest and she died from the burns. After her execution, the attention of the investigators turned to her murderous associates. They were rounded up, one by one, and executed. Somehow, John Green and Blackwell separately evaded arrest for many years. Eventually, they were both caught and hanged in chains until dead. The tale of Alice Arden's murderous act rocked the foundations of Tudor society. People were horrified not at only the terrifying domestic violence, but also that such an act could be committed by a woman. The frightful story of Thomas Arden's murder ignited the imagination of people from all tiers of Tudor society for years to come. In 1592, the story became dramatized into a play Arden of Faversham, which some scholars believe to have been written by William Shakespeare. Whilst Alice didn't succeed in her plan to get away with murder and live happily ever after with her lover, she did earn a place in the history books as one of the most brutal and notorious murderesses of the Tudor era. So what do you think? Was Alice Arden the most brutal and evil murderous mastermind of the Tudor era? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click like and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.